welcome to Watches TV and yet again we managed to get our hands on some pretty spectacular timepieces and the reason why I'm standing in front of uh, the Grand Théâtre de Genève, the Geneva Opera House, but actually it's way too cold here so let's go back inside because our office is just next door, let's go! So I told you, really close by. Anyhow, this all started as the other day I was passing by the Geneva boutique of Jacob & Co and they showed me the, the very last opera Godfather watch, a minute repeater version and I said to myself that we definitely have to share this with you and even better because it enables us to come back on the entire opera series of watches and these are quite different from our regular three-hander and it's not every day that you will see these three watches side by side. So the watch I saw, the one in the middle, is the third model of the collection, the chiming version, and I will get back on this in a second. But uh, previously we had seen and already show you the first and regular version, the Opera Godfather, which came out a few years ago and there's always something kind of bizarre when you use the term regular regarding such timepieces. Nevertheless, the one we have here comes in a black uh, PVD coated titanium case, so it does uh, weigh a bit less compared to the full rose gold version shown previously, but don't worry, you still have plenty of gold inserts and other components here and there. In terms of movement, this watch features a fast rotating 3-axis tourbillon, already quite something, but for the very first time it encompassed a fully functional music box uh, with this pair of cylinders and hidden combs producing the music and naturally playing the main theme of the Godfather movie, one of Jacob Arabo's all-time favorite movie for which he managed to get the rights from Paramount Pictures. But this led to the second version, released last year, with the Scarface Opera, another favorite uh, movie of his, and this time working with Universal Pictures to get the permissions to do this. And you can see uh, one of the famous uh, sentences of the movie, uh, with this gold globe in the middle and the famous The world is yours written on it and Al Pacino's silhouette just beside it. Mechanically speaking, this timepiece has the exact same working principle as the Godfather, also a three-axis tourbillon, also featuring this uh, music box complication. And by activating it with this pusher found at 10 o'clock, not only does it play the music from the movie, let's uh, listen to it uh, for a few seconds. I like you, Tony. There's no lying in you. But as you could witness, the entire dial turns on itself and to wind both the watch and the music box, you juice it up with this uh, violin shaped crankshaft uh, found on the side, uh, but the energy is stored in two different barrels. The one used for timekeeping will give you 42 hours of power reserve and once fully wound, you can activate the music box uh, three times before having to charge it back up. Each time you play it, the full dial rotates by 120 degrees, uh, while at the same time the hour and minute dial always remains in a vertical position for you to read the time without having to do some kind of crazy contortionist move something like that. But let's now focus on this uh, new minute repeater version and frankly there's no way I would have imagined that they could have uh, come up with such a timepiece combining such crazy and intricate complications just pushing again uh, what uh, seems not really feasible. Okay the size of the watch uh, gives you a bit of room to play with but compared to the two previous model it's actually the same size meaning 49 millimeter yeah in width and 23 millimeter in height but the main difference is uh, that the dial doesn't revolve around its central axis on this one. This enabled the watchmakers to remove part of this turning mechanism and instead this freed up space to include uh, the chiming mechanism. So another difference is that the hour and uh, minute dial is now found in the center and floats above the entire dial so no more Don Corleone figurine like on the first model. Instead you will find a picture of the Godfather slash Marlon Brando on the grand piano which hides one of the combs of the music box. So the second one is hidden on its opposite sides. So compared to the other opera watches, the pusher uh, to activate this function has been slightly lowered and is now found at uh, 7-8 o'clock uh, approximately. 
And as a quick uh, side note, I mean, these cylinders and combs may look uh, quite easy parts to manufacture, but in fact, it's way more complicated than we can think in order to produce the exact music, getting the right 120 notes and tempo, and has to be extremely precisely manufactured to attain this. The fact, for instance, that you need perfect synchronization between the two cylinders represent an extra difficulty, but at the same time, with two music sources, it allows to create a richer sound experience. Ah, all these small details. Okay, so that is it for the first musical aspect of this timepiece, but let's now uh, cover its uh, chiming aspect. And to activate it and listen to the actual time, you have a normal slider system for these kind of watches, and this one is found on the left side of the case. And uh, as it is chiming, you can clearly see the gongs and hammers working their thing, deep sound for the hour, a higher pitch note for the actual minute, and a mix of uh, these two for the quarters. So let's quickly listen to it. So all in all, this movement is made out of 758 components. That's really huge. It beats at uh, 3 Hz and has a couple of hours of extra power reserve, 44 hours. And you also fuel it up with the violin uh, crankshaft. And to set the time, you have a gold uh, lift-up uh, bow on the back case. And uh, last but not least, uh, this watch has a very special case, transposing you in the lodges of the Scala Opera House. I mean, it sure is quite spectacular. Maybe not uh, easy to take with you when you travel. But for this, I mean, we have other options. And talking about travel, and this is quite fun, uh, but uh, Jacob and Co. have now mimicked the Swiss passport as the original certificate and operating instructions of the watch. I mean, it's really well done. I think you may even get away entering a few countries uh, with this one. Anyhow, and as if uh, the two first uh, opera models weren't enough, I mean, this one just pushes a bit further some kind of uh, technical watchmaking eccentricity, and that's precisely something I really do appreciate. Well, if you want more exuberant versions, well, with Jacob & Co., this is always possible. A little bit of extra sparkle here and there. I mean, here in Switzerland, sometimes, to be honest, we are slightly a bit more on the conservative side and often you will hear these words, well, no, this is not possible, whether we're talking watchmaking or actually anything else. But if you push a bit, well, then some crazy things can occur, such as these uh, three timepieces. Okay, on the Watchers TV, we do tend to show some pretty crazy timepieces from our good friends, some creative take on uh, mechanical watchmaking. But I really think that uh, we precisely need this uh, to keep uh, the hype, uh, the interest, uh, this kind of different aspect and inspiring dimension of watchmaking. And I fully get that these watches are not necessarily a cup of tea, but in my opinion, they are nevertheless very meaningful. Just a different take on our beloved watchmaking craft. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, see you real soon for some other crazy watches. Till then, all the very best. Thanks for watching, sharing, and the likes. And as always, a huge Viva Watchmaking to you. See you real soon.